Okay, thank you so much um, uh, for this moment. I want to appreciate the fact that God is in the control of everything. Uh, whatever is happening in the world, let's help trust in the mighty God. At one time we shall overcome this situation. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our second lesson in science, uh, especially in the side of magnetism. Um, the last time I left with the some numbers, and I believe in the trade your level base, I did some research, you consulted, and I know you tried to answer some of those questions. Um, however, I would also like us to go through, and I would request that perhaps you can mark yourselves at home there. So we are going to go through the questions that I've left you with last time. Uh, number one was about uh, uh, what a magnet is. What is a magnet? That was our question number one. What is a magnet? That was our question number one. Number two, we first hope the whole down. How are magnetic materials different from non magnetic materials? How are magnetic materials? Different from non-magnetic materials. That was our question number two. Question number three. Question number three was write any four examples of magnetic materials. Write examples of magnetic materials. Um, number four, the question was give the, the difference between soft magnetic materials and hard magnetic materials. Give the difference between soft magnetic materials and hard magnetic materials. And then the last question was write down what happens when the following poles are brought closer. Write down what happens when the following poles are brought together. The first one, North Pole, and North Pole. North Pole and South Pole. So I want to have this, those were the questions I left you with, and um, I request that we go through them um, to see whether 
be on the right track. And uh, I do request that you follow Kenny. Number one, what is the magnet? Remember, we were talking about magnetism, and uh, I gave you certain terms that are very important when you're dealing with magnetism. One of them was a magnet. So, some of them, they are to try what a magnet is. Well, we say a magnet is a piece of metal that has the ability to attract other magnetic materials. The magnet is a piece of metal that has the ability to attract other magnetic materials. That's what we said about a magnet. I hope you got it right. If you didn't, I will we try to make corrections. Our question number two is how are magnetic materials different from non-magnetic materials? The keywords there are magnetic materials. Another one, non-magnetic materials. So, with the magnetic materials, those are materials or those are substances that can easily be attracted by a magnet. Substances that can easily be attracted by a magnet are termed as magnetic materials. And I also remember telling you the substances can also be called, I mean, you can also define them as sub substances that can easily be magnetized. So, two versions. One, substances that can be attracted by magnet, or substances that can easily be magnetized. Then the frame is non-magnetic materials. The opposite of this. These are substances that cannot be attracted by a magnet. Or substances that cannot easily be magnetized. They are referred to as non-magnetic materials. So in the statement you say magnetic materials are substances that can easily be attracted by a magnet, while non-magnetic materials are substances that cannot be attracted by a magnet. I hope you got it right. Then we have number three, write and then four examples of magnetic materials. Those materials, those substances that can easily be attracted by a magnet. Examples, I know you must have listed very many, you must have experimented at home. So here we have iron, we have steel, we have nickel, we have cobalt, we have razor blades, we have nails. Okay, there are quite many. So long as they can still be attracted by a magnet. So those are the examples. Then number four, we, you are required to give the difference between soft magnetic materials and hard magnetic materials. So the keywords again here you have to take care of are those ones are underlined and then this one here. The soft magnetic materials are those that can easily be magnetized. And the best example there is iron. Those substances that can easily be magnetized, that can easily be made into magnets. We call them soft magnetic materials. And the best example is iron. This Almost, I mean, they are the of the other one. Hard magnetic materials. These are substances that take long to be magnetized. Substances that can be, that can, that can take a lot of time to be made into magnets. We call them hard magnetic materials. And the best example there is what we call steel. These ones are used for making temporal magnets. These ones are used for making permanent magnets. Do not get worried about those ones. We shall reach there very soon. So in the statement, soft magnetic materials, a 
are substances that can easily be made into magnets or that take a short time to be magnetized, while hard magnetic materials are substances that take a long time to be magnetized or be made into magnets. Uh, uh, the last question was about to, um, you writing down what happens when the following poles are brought together. I remember I introduced you something called charges and what should run into your mind very quickly when you, when you see North Pole and North Pole. These are charges. Okay? So what happens when you bring the North Pole next to the North Pole? What happens when you bring a positive terminal of a dry cell to a positive terminal of another dry cell? What happens? Okay? So when you bring a North Pole and a North Pole, your answer here should be no and no repel each other. They will repel each other. Or oh, repulsion will take place. This is a light pole, this is also a light pole. So when a light pole and a light pole is brought together, all are brought together, you find that they will repel each other. When you look at north, then you look at south. These are unlike poles. So what happens is when you bring the, the unlike poles together, definitely there, eh? they will attract each other. So our dear candidates out, out there, I hope um, you got some assistance here and uh, where still you, you start, don't hesitate consulting us. We are there to help you. So briefly, this is what we had last time and uh, I would wish to uh, introduce you to our next uh, lesson of the day. Permit me to uh, clear this. Our next area of concern still under magnetism. Uh, today we are going to look at um, properties. Properties of a magnet. Basically this is what we are going to look at at this moment. And uh, I am aware that you have some ideas about properties because you must have learned about that in mathematics, you must have learned about that in light energy. So, a property is, can also be called a rule. The behavior of something. So when you look at magnets, magnets have what certain properties that I want us to um, um, clearly uh, illustrate or learn today. So these properties can also be called laws. Don't be surprised one time you being asked write down one law of magnets. It's the same thing. So we have a number of them. And allow me give you examples of such properties. Property number one. Magnetic lines of force run or move from the North Pole, capital N, North Pole, T, 
to the false pole, capital S. That's our property number one. When you're dealing with magnets and uh, the illustrate for you the diagram is tied. Remember I told you the magnet has got two poles and those poles are south and north. So when you get an illustration of that nature and you are required uh, to give the property of the magnet illustrated, what should come into your mind is this, that magnetic lines of force run from the North Pole to the South Pole. These things you are seeing here, these, these are represent the arrows, these are magnetic lines of force. They run from this pole the South Pole. And to bring a meaning, the meaning closer, those lines must have arrows. Those arrows are very important. It's an indication that these lines begin from the North Pole and end at the South Pole. Alternatively, you can be given this, then they say, complete the diagram by drawing arrows and you've been given these poles. Our candidates ensure that you have in your mind that magnetic lines of force start from the North Pole to the South Pole. That's our property, number one. And you must say it very well because we are going to have situations. Um, for example, you can have a situation of this nature. And they are put here, maybe letter K. They say this chain did not tell us that the magnet that got the, the pole, which is called K. And here they have put letter T. And then they, they have brought for you arrows of this nature. Okay. Put for you this, put for you the other one, like that. Then in the paper they ask you name poles marked K and T. What are you going to do? So our dear partners use this idea that magnetic line, you, you follow these arrows. Magnetic lines of course run from the North Pole to the South Pole. So you realize that if I may ask you what is pole T, our pole T will become the North Pole. Why? Magnetic lines of force run from the North Pole to the South Pole. Then our K definitely will become the South what? Pole. So that's property number one. Property number two. Um, magnetism. Magnetism, remember what it means, is a force of attraction or repulsion containing magnet. Magnetism is, magnetism can, sorry, can pass through non-magnetic material. This is another word, non-magnetic materials. By now, we should, be, we should be able to explain what magnetism 
is, and should also be able to explain what non-magnetic materials are. So group number two have written, magnetism can pass through non-magnetic materials. Uh, I remember last time, I think we did not handle so much about magnetic materials, but I just want to remind you that magnetic materials are substances um, that cannot be attracted by a magnet. Those substances that cannot be attracted by a magnet are called non-magnetic material. For example, we have plastic here, cannot be attracted by a magnet. We have here glass, you look at this, cannot be attracted by a magnet. It's a non-magnetic material. We have our duster here, when you put it here, cannot be attracted by a magnet. Okay? We have another one here, it's plastic, cannot be attracted by a magnet. There is no force of attraction at all. So, we have here this plastic bottle here, cannot be attracted by a magnet, it's a non-magnetic material. And many others, grass, you mentioned, your bags, clothes, cannot be attracted by a the magnet. Therefore, they are called non-magnetic what? Materials. But I want to bring you back to properties of a magnet. Um, magnetism can pass through non-magnetic materials. Whereas these ones cannot be attracted by a magnet. But the force of magnetism, the force contained in this magnet, can penetrate through a non-magnetic material. I want to give you an illustration. In this bottle here, I have um, iron filings. Iron filings are magnetic materials. A piece of paper is a non-magnetic material. Then I have a magnet here. Let's first illustrate whether the force containing this magnet can pass through this non-magnetic material. So when you put a magnet under the paper, see what happens. All the iron filings uh, are standing are being attracted, meaning that the force of attraction containing this magnet can pass through this paper, and the paper is a non-magnetic what? Material. So you can see our uh, iron filings are not falling, meaning that the force containing this magnet can pass through this paper, giving us this property here. Magnetism can pass through non-magnetic materials. I hope you are making what I'm saying. I want to give you another illustration. Inside here, we have, I mean, sorry, with me I'm handling a nail. A nail is uh, a magnetic material. This one is plastic. And I put a nail inside, like this. Then I bring the magnet. Nail is uh, magnetic. This one is non-magnetic. Let's see whether the force of attraction contained in this magnet can pass through to attract the other magnet, I mean the other nail inside. So when you bring this here closer, you find that what is making this magnet get attached to this plastic is because of the nail inside. So what can we conclude there? That magnetism, the force contained in here, can pass through a non-magnetic material to attract the name which is inside. Bring us to this property here. When you remove the name which is the magnetic material, then you put this magnet here, you see this one. So, meaning, magnetism can pass through or penetrate. Um, through non-magnetic materials. And I know some of you kind of those games in the class, you put reservoirs on top of your desks and then you put a magnet inside your desk and you find that there will be some game inside. Number three, um, magnetism. is 
more concentrated. At the poles. Another property that I want us to look at is this one here. Magnetism is more concentrated at the poles. How do we illustrate this? Let's have this simple diagram. Here we have not pole. We have first pole. In other words, the force of attraction in a magnet. That strength of a magnet is concentrated at the poles than other parts. Okay? These are iron filings. When you drop them to the magnet, you'll find that most of them move to the poles. What does it indicate? It means that uh, the strength of a magnet is more concentrated at the poles. I want to give you an example. Let's use this iron file still. So we have an example here. When you get the iron filings, put them on a the magnet, you find that the concentration is at the ends. At the ends giving us this property here, magnetism is more concentrated at the poles. The strength of a magnet is greater at the what? At the poles. Uh, we, we have the next property. Property number four. When a magnet, when a magnet is uh, broken down into pieces, comma, the pieces, the broken pieces, the pieces gain magnetic poles. When a magnet is broken into pieces, the pieces gain what you call that? Magnetic poles. Excuse me. Uh, I have a magnet with me here. When I decide to throw this magnet down, of course it will get broken. Now when it bro gets broken, like these small pieces that I'm holding, these are when you're from a magnet like this. So when you break a magnet and you get such pieces, these pieces become mag magnet will gain magnetic poles. Each broken piece becomes an independent magnet. Illustration. You have one magnet of this type. We have your north, we you have your south. Magnet of this kind. So we decide to drop it down, it breaks into small pieces. These are the broken uh, pieces of uh, the magnet. Each piece will gain magnetic poles. 
as I've illustrated. This one means we gain north, south, north, south, north, south, just like that. And they will bear the same characteristic of the original magnet. So this one gives us another property of a magnet, number four. When a magnet is broken down into pieces, the pieces gain magnetic poles. The other one is number five. Uh, a freely, a freely suspended magnet. It's another word I want you to master is spelling. Freely suspended magnet. Always rests. In the north south pole. But you know, today, another person can say a freely suspended magnet. Suspended magnet points at the north hyphen south direction. These are the following ways you can handle this property. Can you say to say rest in, rest in points at begin with north, put hyphen, then south, sorry, south direction. So what does it mean? But when you get a magnet, then you suspend it. To suspend means to hang something in space so that it moves by itself. Have a small string, but we can use this very well here. To suspend you means that you 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 light you can tie it on a piece of peg in the space. But whether you rotate this magnet in whichever way. When it rests, you will find that this red part will always point at the north direction. So it, you, you suspend, you hang a magnet into space. When it stops the movement, it will always rest in the north south direction. Okay? That's also another property of the magnet that I want you to take uh, a great uh, interest in. Then the other one, and when you make it forward about the next one, you will come across questions of this nature. Uh, you draw for your diagram of this nature. They put here north, put here south. So the demonstration of this property that when you suspend a magnet freely in space and when it comes to to, to rest you'll find that it will always point at the north-south direction. And you should always begin from north, not, not the other way around. Rest in north, put 
this hyphen south direction. You don't put the hyphen, you will not be marked because it's from north to south. You leave it blank, then it's a different story altogether. The other property, think the second last one. Same size as that one, put the poles. At this time, we are going to have unlike poles. The opposite of north is south. So, if we put south here, then we shall have this one as the north pole. So, these are two different magnets or their candies. But the poles close, uh, uh, closest to each other are not the same, they are different. Therefore, those poles are called unlike. And what happens with this pole? Let me bring this one here with a different pole to this pole. What happens? They will always attract each other. They will pull with each other. How do you present that? You simply draw arrows. And those arrows Remember, magnetic lines of force run from the north pole to the south pole. So your, the direction of your arrows matter. So you put this in that form and also this one in that form. Put the arrow, put the arrow. Put this one, put that one like that. That's an illustration that we are attracting each other. For now, I'll give you a simple diagram of this type. Which property of uh, Magnets is illustrating in there. Look at the pole, north, south. Those are unlike poles. So, which property is that? Unlike poles of a magnet attract each other. You can also still have the same diagrams. This form, have this. This time, we are changing the poles. You can put here south. Then we put here north, and we put here south, and we put here north. See what happens. They are still unlike poles, but they are not going to the arrows in the same way. They are not going to the magnetic lines moving in the same way. They are going to change from north to south. So it will change from the other side to this side. Put that one, put this. Just like that. The same diagram, but pay a lot of attention on the arrows. You can also have the same diagram illustrated in a, in a different way. Name the poles. Can say north, can say south. 
Nov Tau You can have these magnetic lines of force running from the North Pole to the South Pole showing attraction Then you can also have still this coming this way I wish I had a pair of compass Okay, you can have this, you can also have that These are still magnetic lines of force running from the North Pole First of all, we have not completed the diagram, so you have to supply the arrows. Okay. Supply arrows north pole to south pole, north to south. So you put the arrow around that region, just like that. North pole to south pole. So you put your arrows in this form. These arrows matter a lot. These other lines in presentation of these, these other magnetic lines of force. In other loop, when you take this, it comes from the other side like this. So north, north coming to south. Okay? North coming to south. So when they say come the diamond putting arrow on um, uh, this line here your arrow should face that direction. It's the same as these other loops coming like this, coming like this. So complete this, the same. Coming from the North Pole, entering the South Pole. So all these illustrations are about the same property. Magnetic light meaning, unlike poles of a magnet, attract each other, okay? Lastly, lastly, I want us to have the last property number seven, light poles, light poles of a magnet repel each other. The light poles are the ones that are the same. Here we have north, south, south, north. But here we are going to have north and north. South and south. North and north, those are light poles. South and south, those are light poles. What happens to them? Light poles of a magnet repel each other. How do we illustrate that? Draw similar magnets as I'm doing sorry, this one's big. This one's big. So here we shall have north, then also we shall have north, then south. South. Can also have another one here. South, South, North, and then North. Look at these poles, they are the same. Look at this one, they are not the same. So these are the light poles, these are light poles. What happens to them? They repair each other when they are brought closer to each other. So how do you show repulsion? These ones show attraction. So repulsion, you have these lines coming in this form, just like that. They are not attracting each other. And make sure these lines don't join each other, they're independent. That diagram is not complete. You represent those 
magnet lines of force using arrows. North pole to south pole. North pole, these are loops, they go and join here. So, north pole to south pole, just like that. North pole to south pole. North pole to south pole, just like that. Similarly to this one here, you show repulsion. They don't attract each other, just like that. So, this time, do not put arrows pointing in that direction. Remember, these loops come like this, joining the first pole. So, your arrows must change, just like this. So, what, what does the diagram, what, what is the diagram illustrate? Point that I want to, the point that I want to make very clear to you, whenever I ask you about your property and magnets are being drawn, what must you uh, consider first? Look at the poles. Do they look like, are they the same? Are they similar? If they are similar, what should run into your mind? Like poles repel each other. If they are not similar, unlike poles attract what? Each other. Our dear candidates, um, those are a few properties that I wanted to present to you and uh, I hope they will be very useful to you um, as it uh, pertains magnetism. And I just want to leave you with uh, some few numbers too that you can try to to attempt during your free time. So exercise. Mention any four properties of a magnet. Okay. Which property of a magnet? The labels. Pilots to locate direction. Then the last one, the last one. Number three, complete the diagram below. So all the evidence for time being, I want to end here and uh, please try to research on those numbers and uh, next time we meet, we shall have corrections done. Allow me wish all of you all these blessings. Thanks so much.